All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to more Catafalque Chess. Today's video, we're going to be looking at some chess puzzles. So chess puzzles are an essential part of anybody's training regimen who's trying to get better at the game, whether you are a newer player, uh, a, a novice amateur, or even a professional. I guarantee you that um, grandmasters at the highest level are still solving puzzles regularly. Uh, so... I do recommend, especially when you're first starting out, solving puzzles that are of a similar theme. Uh, this is to be able to reinforce that idea. See, there's so many different kinds of puzzles. If you were to, say, you know, work on some forks, you know, for forking attacks, setting up batteries, um, you know, pawn structures, ad advancing your king, like it, it's too much to remember at one time. You want to be able to work on individual ideas and reinforce them with these puzzles uh, so that you can use them in your own games. Um, so my favorite type of puzzles are actually checkmating puzzles. So these can be um, checkmate in one move, checkmate in five moves, checkmate in ten moves. Way too fucking hard for me. <laughs> but... Um, I like these checkmate puzzles because once you solve them, it is, you know, a solid checkmate. It's it's easy to recognize when the puzzle has been finished because, you know, it's checkmate. Um, I also believe that these are probably the best puzzles to start with for newer players. Uh, I find that uh, definitely when I was first starting out, uh, I could have a tremendously winning position, but I couldn't finish the game. Uh, so these checkmating puzzles will show you some patterns to recognize to be able to checkmate uh, your opponent. Um, so, why don't we get right into it. We have this puzzle up on the screen here. And uh, this is right to move. And uh, I recommend... As a, so there's going to be six of these puzzles. I do recommend um, pausing the video and maybe giving yourself uh, two or three minutes to try to find um, the best move. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a good habit to get into when solving things. If You know, you don't, you don't want to kill yourself if you don't see it after five, ten minutes. Um, you know, check out the answer and learn the the idea is to learn the pattern. Uh, so don't feel bad if you can't find it, but uh, at least if you can't find it, then uh, learn the pattern. You know, uh, try to run through the puzzle a couple of times. That will definitely help you. Um, all right. So the answer for this puzzle is Queen C three, and so what this does uh, it lines up the dark square bishop with the queen aiming at this crucial g7 square uh this is absolutely crushing if black does nothing let's say a nonsense move like um a6 doesn't see the checkmate threat then um what you're threatening is uh checkmate this way um with the queen capturing on g7 so this Battery actually sets up an unstoppable checkmate. That is to say, no matter what black does, eventually he will get mated. Sometimes the opposite, uh, your opponent will have a couple of moves to throw in that will delay the inevitable. And it is actually important that you take those moves into consideration. Um, some of them might look threatening while they're actually not. So you do want to be considering these things um, rather than just finding your best moves you want to look at your opponent's responses so let's uh look at the best response for black here um that was a little too fast it's really only this uh there is basically no other way to protect uh, this g7 square and you can see this is terrible for black white has two good responses he could actually he could capture uh the queen with either of these puns uh, Black does actually have uh, another move that basically does the same thing. He can check. <laughs> As you can see, that also just gives up his king. Uh, I'm sorry, gives up his queen. But after this, uh, Black has nothing else to do. 
um, this checkmate is unstoppable. Great. Moving on to the next puzzle. Uh, this is actually a uh, black move. Um, and this puzzle is a little bit more tricky. Uh, so I designed this video to choose, uh, select a couple of different patterns. They're all, they're all more or less checkmating puzzles with the exception of one. Uh, but I want to use different pieces uh, in, in, in all of the puzzles just so, you know, we're not sort of uh, doing a queen checkmate in every, um, every puzzle. You know, sometimes you will lose your queen in the game and you still have to try to checkmate your opponent without it. So uh, go ahead and pause the video again, and hopefully you will have seen Black's best move, which is Rook D2. And if any of you are familiar, or perhaps unfamiliar with this little symbol here, this double exclam, uh, the engine recognizes this as a brilliant move. Um, that is to say, it's more not only is it the best move for black but it's uh, the engine considers it difficult to find um so if you found this congratulations this is a, a fairly tricky puzzle um so let's look at why this is so good um when solving checkmating puzzles or when solving any puzzles really you want to look at where the opposing king can possibly move um so while this it Look, just looking at White's King right now, so we could see that these escape squares are blocked by our Black King. Great. Um, he can't move over here because we have um, a pawn guarding this uh, before square. These two squares are blocked by our pawns, uh, which are protecting each other. And... Um, Moving down again is impossible because of uh, the pawn, the our black D pawn. So the only square that black had to move was this um, D three square. So by moving our rook over, we are taking away all of the squares um, that black has to or that white has to move. And um, the only thing we would need to do to finish the game is to checkmate him. So now that we play this move, we look at um, Black's response and he realistically does not have uh, any good moves here. Um, the engine recommends, why is it doing that? The engine recommends H5. Uh, so I just would like to move this one up there. Uh, H5, just attacking this, it really doesn't do anything. Um, and it's followed by uh, bishop d3 checkmate. You can see that our bishop is protected by the rook. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. This is an unstoppable checkmate. Um, yeah, even if... See, I wonder what the engine makes of this move. Okay, so it considers this an alternative uh, to h5, trying to guard the square. And let's see. Th this is interesting, actually. I just want to see. Oh, no. Oh, it, very interesting. So um, we now the checkmate square actually changes. Uh, we can come up here and deliver checkmate this way. Uh, White still has nowhere to go, so uh, that is inter is interesting as well. You you know considering that no matter what White does, it's still checkmate, even though the square on which you're delivering checkmate changes. So that's um, you know definitely something to take into consideration and something that I overlooked, <laughs> but it is still uh, it is still unstoppable checkmate. Moving on, we are on to our third puzzle here. Um, we have. White to move. Yes, white to move. Um, so taking a look at this, we can see that um, the black king is not looking too good. <laughs> uh, he's sort of confined to this um, A file here, 
Uh, we have our pawn on b6 that is guarded by a rook. We have our pawn on a4 that guards this uh, escape square on b5. And the a7 square is also controlled by our pawn here on the b-file. So considering that the king has nowhere to go, logically, if we were to just deliver checkmate, uh, that would be it. He would be, uh, he'd be done. Um, so this would be the spot to pause the video, see if you can find the checkmate. And hopefully you found bishop f1. See, this is beautiful because it sets up uh, an x-ray. Uh, they, they would call this an x-ray attack. Uh, the bishop is attacking the king sort of through this pawn. Uh, now, the king has nowhere to go, so once this pawn is moved, uh, he's going to be in check, and black has no good moves here. Um, the engine says that black's best move is actually um, rook captures h2. What this would do is sort of throw the rook in the way, blocking check for one extra move, but it really doesn't stop anything. Um, as you can see, once we move our pawn up, the king is in check. The only way to block it is um, by putting the rook away and as, as you can see this symbol here this square is forced meaning that is the only legal move for um for black and we don't want to blunder and take with the king <laughs> we want to uh just deliver checkmate with our bishop here very interesting stuff moving right along we have the next puzzle uh so there's a lot of stuff going on here um a lot of pieces still on the board, but um, this is actually uh, an unstoppable checkmate for black. Let's see my notes here. So we're, we're analyzing the position and uh, we have to think ahead a little bit. Um, this, this is a checkmate where um, you're going to have to move a piece multiple times. Uh, so take into consideration what each of Black's pieces are doing, where White's king can move right now, and just looking at the position a little bit, uh, our rook is in an excellent spot. He is confining the Black king to this uh, first rank, um, and the knight, actually, this is such a strong knight. Um, it's actually my favorite way to use a knight. I, I know usually people are using them to fork pieces, but um, when the king is on any uh, of the side, any side of the board, any any of these four sides, uh, you can put a knight. Notice how it controls these. I don't want this. Uh, these two squares. The king has nowhere to go. Using these two pieces in tandem, the rook and the knight, uh, which, by the way, the rook is also, the knight is also protecting the rook. And so you can see how strong this knight is over here. Um, the king has nowhere to go. And uh, we look at possible checks that we can give. So I would, again, say pause the video, see what you can come up with. And hopefully you found this move, knight d4. Um, so this isn't an immediate checkmate, but it does set us up for an unstoppable checkmate. Um, white has no good moves here. Um, notice, no matter which way white tries to stop us, we have uh, a backup plan. Um, so we are threatening these two checkmates. Um, we have knight to e2, which um, white has a couple of responses to, and um, we have knight to b3, which white actually has no responses to. So let's just say that white tries to move here, uh, which the engine actually doesn't even recommend as the best move. I mean, you're getting made it anyway, so... I argue that you have no good moves, 
and uh, you should just resign in this position. But, um, you know, some people say never resign, which I definitely see the logic. Um, Black could mess up. He can mess up his checkmate. So uh, if you think there's a possibility that your opponent's going to screw up, then go ahead. Play uh, rookie one. You know, try try your best. Uh, so instead of checkmating over here, you just checkmate over here. And um, it's funny. The engine recommends the best move for white here being knight g6 uh only because <laughs> that's it's the most product the most productive thing white can do is sacrifice his knight for uh, a check so some people even call that a spite check it's just sort of prolongs the game an extra move because it forces black to do something about it um and after that capture has happened then we just deliver checkmate um, so that's it. That's uh, white is done in this position. We only have two more, two more puzzles. We're, we're working right on through this. Uh, so this is actually not a checkmating puzzle. This is one that is a little bit different. Uh, I just wanted to illustrate a similar idea how uh, some of these puzzles can work a little bit differently. But you will see. Um, oh, I've actually given away the move. <laughs> um, this one I have to reset as well. Uh, so, I mean, we already saw it, but we can take a look at this anyway. Um, this is white to move. Black is not in a great spot. Um, he... The king is guarding these two squares, which is really nice. Um, so if black were to move on to the A file here, since his... Uh, well, he can't, because uh, this rook is guarding the A file. Um, sorry, I'm like getting my pieces mixed up here. Yeah, okay. Um... So it's white to move, and we see that the best move is uh, c4. But it's not because it sets up a unstoppable checkmate. You see, if black does nothing to stop um, this, it's actually a rook a4, which we're threatening. You see now... This pawn now controls this square. This whole file was already controlled by the rook. And our king sort of uh, controls this escape square. Black would have nowhere to go. And this would be a check that's protected by the uh, white B pawn. That, uh, that would be a checkmate. Um, Black's only option to save this game is actually sacrificing his rook. So... Uh, we look at the best continuation move, which is uh, rook b1, and we see that uh, white can just capture, which uh, is the best move. And this game is lost. It is totally, totally dead lost for black. Um, you have a rook and three pawns versus three pawns. So um, black, yeah, he is two squares away from queening. But, you know, let's say he pushes his pawn, which the engine actually considers as a blunder. You just... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, if the rook pushes pawns, you just checkmate. No? Missed win? What is going on? Oh! Now that your, your king's not there anymore. I see. I see what it wants you to do. You have to bring your king back first. And then even if black was to get a queen, then it's checkmate. Um, so, after you take the rook, uh, black's only move is actually, uh, trying to escape, because it, again, like, now your king can't come back to be two, because the king, uh, the black king's in the way, you can't checkmate right away, so, what you instead is you swing your rook over, and, um, black is very upset that he loses his pawn so close, just one square away from making a queen, and black has nothing else to do. There's no way that black can save these two pawns when you have a rook and three pawns and a king. Um, no matter what you do, you're going to take away black's other pawns. You're going to push 
any one of these pawns really to make a queen and um that's a topic for another video is consolidating your win um but uh black is lost here you can see that the engine actually says white is up plus 55 that's uh you you cannot win at that point all right let's get this last puzzle out of the way so this is a very uh obviously an end game puzzle um the end game puzzles are much less forgiving in a real game sense. That is to say that um, usually in these end game positions, if you um, make the correct move, you win the game, and if you make the incorrect move, you could lose the game. Uh, so we must, oh, we always want to be precise, but particularly in the end game, we need to be precise, and even more so uh, when. Uh, you'll notice these rook and pawn endgames. Very, very tricky, these rook and pawn endgames. Uh, you must be very precise. So, um, you know, why don't you, we pause the video here. We see our best move. And the best move is king g3. Um, you will find, I'm going to say nine times out of ten, because not everything in chess is absolute, that um, when you're in an endgame, the player with the more advanced king usually wins. We can see that uh, white's king is being confined to this first rank by the rook. Um, white's got nothing here. Absolutely nothing. Um, this is another situation where white only actually has a spite check. Um, what we're threatening is rook d1 checkmate. Uh, notice that the, so the entirety of this rank is going to be under attack by the rook once we move up, and these um, squares are all guarded by our king. So uh, the only thing that black can do, white can do, is move his rook over to either the E or the F file. And once we go to deliver checkmate, white can block. <laughs> he can block checkmate for move. But then we take, and the game is over. And uh, just as a quick note, this position is actually, um, if you only have a rook and a king, and let's pretend that there, these pieces do not exist. Uh, rook and king versus king is n surprisingly difficult to finish. There's a lot of players that might even just lose on time when they have only a king. Uh, let, let, well, let's say they have the rook and the king versus the lone king, and they can't check mid in time, and the clock runs out, and they cry. Um, this is how you do that checkmate. You have to get the king like in a corner in a bad spot. And then you can, uh, this isn't the only way, but this is a good way, um, this pattern here. So, memorize these patterns, use them in your games, and beat the shit out of your opponents. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.